everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and this is the next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 429 only it's premiering on Sunday. It just so happens that in 2021 Christmas falls on a Saturday. Now you may be watching this in 2021 but you also might be watching this in 2025. My YouTube classes, they're technique based and commercial free and I leave them up on my channel forever and ever and ever. So if you are joining me in 2021, I hope that it is Sunday that you are watching and we are live chatting right over here, live chatting away during the premiere of this class. If not, then we're just happy you join us whenever. <laughs> Again, my classes are full-length, technique-based, and totally commercial-free. So no weird stops and starts in the middle of the class. No. <laughs> now, if you want a chance to be a winner-winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, well, that's easy-peasy. All you have to do is post a comment below. But to be able to post a comment below, you have to subscribe to us. So there's a little heart with an SMS right over here. Just click on that. A subscribe bar will come up and you then can post a comment below. Live chat does not count. So it's Sunday. We're watching this Sunday, December 26th, 2021. Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you had an amazing day, whether that be filled with so many family and friends that they were busting out of the house in the garage in the backyard, or if it's just you and your fur babies, I hope that you found some joy and some peace and some comfort in the day. And just know that in the SMS community, we are all here for each other. So we're going to have a wonderful day today. I have got such wonderful things to show you. I really do. I, I don't have winner winner for you today. Why? Well, because I'm taping this class earlier than normal because of the holidays. So I didn't want to limit how many people had a chance to be a winner winner chicken dinner because people post their comments below all throughout the week. And then we generally we pick our winners every Thursday. So to to pull winners now would be kind of short changing some people who haven't had a chance to comment yet. And we're going to maybe do the same thing next week too. That's New Year's. So I'll let you know how we're going to play New Year's, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and do the live chat New Year's morning. Yeah, that's a Saturday, but I think I'm going to do the live chat New Year's morning and we'll see how things go. At any rate, no winner winner ch chicken dinner today, but that means you still have an opportunity to post those comments and we will we'll announce winner winners just as soon as I know everybody's had enough opportunity. And like I said, it may not be this week and it may not even be next week if I tape early. So it may be uh, the third week or the second week into January before we announce, gosh, we'll have a whole list of you. Wow, there'll be like six of you. Oh, hopefully easy names. <laughs> Now, what do I have for you today? Oh my gosh, I have Simply Defined dies. Not a new release, no. This girl has run out of room in her warehouse and it is time. I always tell manufacturers, you gotta rip the Band-Aid off. You know, when you're ready to let it go, come talk to me, we'll be interested in buying it, but you've gotta just rip the Band-Aid off and be willing to almost give it away. And it wouldn't be fair of me to ask that of them if I didn't do it myself for my own products. <laughs> It'd be like, yeah, we want your older stuff and we want it for nothing. <laughs> but my older stuff, no, no, I have to charge full price for it even though it's older. Nope, when it's time for it to go, it's time for it to go. So simply defined, not all of it, but there are SKUs on sale for prices that are basically giving it away, let me tell you. <laughs> now some of, the, uh, some of the dies we have one of, some of them we have two, some of them we have 10, some of them we have 20, some of them we have it, well, I liked my design more than you liked your <laughs> or my design. <laughs> and we have a lot of them. So you just never know what's gonna resonate with people and I do it and I think, oh, I love it. And then I show it to you and you're all like, yeah, no, but 
for a dollar? Maybe. <laughs> really, we have dyes for a dollar. Yep, they've got to go. So I'm going to show you techniques using Sizzix today. And even if you don't have a Sizzix Big Shot machine, that's okay. A Big Shot, a Big Kick, a, a Vagabond, a Plus, a Pro, a Fabby, a Vintage, any of the Big Shot family. It's, it's okay. If you have somebody other, some other manufacturer's die cutting machine, you are going to be able to take what I'm using today and apply it to the machine that you currently have. Yes, unless it's the little boutique one or a sidekick. But if you have a six inch or a larger die cutting machine, what I show you today, I you should be able to take and apply to the machine that you currently have in your crafty arsenal. I mean, you already did the hard part. The hard part was saying, yes, I want a die cutting machine and then saving up for it and buying it because it is an investment without question. It is not a $2 item or a $10 item or a $20 item. And very rarely is it ever a $50 or $60 item. So it is an investment in your hobby, but you've already jumped off that boat if you've got one. Now let me show you how to take what you already have and move it to the next level with what I think is some of the most underutilized tools from Sizzix. Actually underutilized tools from a lot of manufacturers because I think almost everybody has a type of version of it. This class we're going to focus on what I call the squishy and the knock knock. <laughs> Sizzix does not like that I call it a squishy and a knock knock. It is actually called a silicone pad and a textured impression pad. I'll tell you the story later, but we're going to be focusing on those tools and a million different ways to use them. Later on in January, I'm going to be focusing on their crease pad. I'm going to use their crease pad once today. But in come January and on YouTube in January, I'm really going to focus on that crease pad. I need to let you know that the dies are limited. We only have a few of some and a whole bunch of others. And the crease pad is limited. So I'm texting. I'm texting on my phone like right before I start. Should I show the crease pad? Should I not show the crease pad? Because if I show it now and we sell out of it, we might not have it for the class in January. And it's perfect for the class in January. So I should also let you know, Victorious Victor from Sizzix is no longer with Sizzix. Nope. Bye, Victor. Good luck. I know where you went. Good luck to you. We're going to miss you like you won't believe. So Victorious Victor is no longer at Sizzix Ellison. Sizzix Sarah is still with them, but they've shifted things around a little bit. And well, I have a new person at Ellison. Sarah's still going to be helping along, but I have a new person. She's not really new. I've known her for a long time. She's been with the company for a long time, but there was like this gap where they were trying to figure out who to put me with. Now, I'm not sure if that's because it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody at Ellison like drew who got the short straw to handle scrapbooking made simple. But as it turned out, ta-da, it's Taylor. <laughs> That's kind of the way it was. Stacy, ta-da, it's Taylor who's going to be handling your account. So Taylor, she's wonderful. She's been with the company for quite some time. And just like Sarah has worked her way up, which I think is wonderful and inspirational that they started in positions that were, you know, lower level and they have put in the time, the effort, the work, the commitment, the heart, the drive to finally end up in the positions that they are. So while Sizzix Sarah is still there and will still be helping with my account a little bit, ta-da, it's Taylor has taken over and that's what I'm going to call her because that's kind of how it, the news came to me. Hey Stacy, your new person is, ta-da, it's Taylor. So ta-da, it's Taylor from Sizzix. Got a call from me like literally before I started this. Do I show the crease pad? Do I not show the crease pad? What do I do? And she's like, okay, we're limited but I've got you covered. I've locked up every last crease pad. There may be some on Sizzix.com but anything that was available to order is now being held for me. 
Ta-da! It's Stacy. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> so, so the crease pads are limited, the dyes are limited, but wait till you see what we do with them using that squishy and the knock-knock. This focus is on the squishy and the knock-knock, the silicone pad and the textured impression pad, and how to use them to the best of your ability, even if you're using another machine and you're using their comparable textured impression pad or silicone pad. So I'm gonna get started for today because I don't have any winner winner chicken dinner to talk to you about. I'm gonna pull, what did I, I'm gonna bring over some samples and this really is a technique based class. I encourage you to take notes. I encourage you to write this YouTube number down. We are gonna do technique after technique after technique and hopefully answer some questions that you may have about this product and hopefully show you some ways that maybe you hadn't thought about using some of this product and most importantly, giving you the permission to try. It's only paper. I'm using black and white paper today. That's it. But we're gonna make it go and become magic. All right, so I'm gonna tilt on down for today and we're gonna get started. It's good to see everybody. Um, it feels weird not having a winner winner, but you know what? It is what it is. Okay, you guys, down we go and welcome. Ta-da, it's Taylor to Scrapbooking Made Simple. Taylor, we're, we're ever so glad to have you as part of the SMS team and Sizzik Sarah, I know you're there for us at any time and congratulations on your promotion and Oh, we're gonna, we're, I know you're there. If I need to, if I need some Sarah fix, I know I just need to pick up the phone and call and you'll answer. <laughs> All right, down we go. It's good to see everybody. And I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Down we go, bye. Okay, so let's put some glasses on to see what I'm doing. And let's zoom on in. So for those of you who have never been with us before, I'm very low tech. I don't have fancy lighting or dual cameras or cameras hooked up to computers. What you see is what you get. Uh, there's no editing. <laughs> it is what it is. Sometimes mistakes happen and we just work right through them. So this week I do not have a tremendous amount of samples to show you, being that it is a short week and the SMS girls have been so very busy. But this is a simply defined die and stamp set all of those cute little balloons and it's on sale so there's one sample for you and here is another which is also a simply defined product this background now how did we do this oh wait till you see okay so I think I'm going to start by talking about a squishy and a knock knock and what they are and why I call them a squishy and a knock knock. And I'm going to bring the, I'm going to bring a crease pad over here just so I have it. Okay. So in the beginning, before <laughs> a long, long time ago, way back when Sizzix had a, a silicone pad and a texture pad and they had a crease pad. Now, today it's very clear what each of them are, but in time gone by, they were all black. All of them were black, the same shade of black. I mean, it was virtually impossible to tell which was a crease pad, which was a textured impression pad, and which was a squishy or a, a silicone pad. So for me to help explain it to you, because I'm showing you on camera, I, 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 need, you to, I need you to have a visual way to understand what I'm doing, I took and I made this the squishy for obvious reasons. It's squishy, <laughs> right? It's squishy. And while this one was still black, I made it a knock-knock pad, right? Because you can go knock, 
knock knock on it. So while these were both black, I changed the name to Squishy and Knock Knock. And that's how a lot of people know them today. They will call Sizzix and ask, um, where do I find the Squishy and the Knock Knock? So I had harped on them for years and years and years to change the color. How hard is it to change the color of plastic? Come on, people. Well, they finally did it a couple years ago and they gave me the worldwide exclusive on it. And so they changed the impression pad to white. The, so the Knock Knock is now white. The squishy is now gray and the crease pad, which I called the thud pad because it kind of goes thud. It doesn't knock knock and it doesn't squishy, but the crease pad is the thud pad. Now that we have the three colors, unfortunately those names have stuck. So the thud pad is kind of flexible and malleable. It's a crease pad. The squishy, obviously squishy for a reason, and the textured impression pad. Now, we sell these two pieces together. These are like two peas and a pod. 99% of the time, you are using these two items together. You just are. You're using these two items together. They were meant to go together. Can you accidentally cut into this? Yes, but it's very self-healing. Once you buy these, you really should never have to buy them again. Do they come with your machine when you bought them? Oh, no, 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 they do not. <laughs> this is an add-on. Are they expensive? No, they're not expensive at all. But what they give you is another way to look at die cutting. And I'm going to start with the squishy and the knock knock. I'm gonna put the crease pad, the thud pad over here, and we're gonna to get to that a little bit later. Now, first thing I wanna do is just die cut. That's all I'm gonna do is, is just die cut. And I've got a die here, it's a simply defined die. I wanna show people who are not familiar with die cutting, what die cutting is. So I'm gonna grab a piece of white paper. And because my dies tend to be intricate, so there's lots of detail, lots of lines in them, you're going to need a precision base plate for the most part with my dies. And a precision base plate looks just like this. Does it come with your machine? No, but we sell a bundle that has it. <laughs> so you basically get it for free when you buy the bundle. But if you, if you thought that this came with your machine, you need to go back and look again, unless it was some sort of a special bundle because this is sold separately. What does this do? This lets a very intricate die, lots of design in there, very intricate die, kind of bite into that paper and make a cut. You're like, how is that die? How's this gonna cut paper? Cause there's no blades at all. There's just these lines on it that will, with the right pressure, cut paper. It is amazing. If you've never seen die cutting, die cutting is wonderful. It's like magic, <laughs> really it is. So I'm gonna bring my machine over Let's see, where do I want to put those for right now? I'm going to bring my Sizzix machine over and I am working with a Sizzix Big Shot machine. It is a workhorse in the industry. It's been around since the beginning of time. I'm using a manual one, which means that there's a handle here that I'm going to crank. And what comes with the machine when you buy it is a platform, a base platform, and a solo shim. You're also going to get to what will be clear plates. Mine are not clear because they've been used. You'll get two clear plates to go with it. You will not get the precision base plate unless you buy the bundle that we have or perhaps somebody else's bundle, but you will need it to use my dies. To die cut, super simple. In fact, maybe I can just grab, let's just grab this frame really quick because this is just an open frame die. Okay, so this is an open frame die. So you can see the difference between 
something that is an easy cut versus something that has far more detail. This, this does not need a precision base plate. This I can put right down on my platform, my solo shim, one plate, die on paper, ridges facing down, second cut plate over the top, because remember you get two of them when you get your machine, and I'm just gonna send it on through. And this is gonna cut like a dream because that die is so easy. One pass should do it. Again, there's no blades to harm yourself with or for kids if they want a die cut. And poof, just like that, I have something that looks like a cloud <laughs> or a little label from this. Now, the next die, the one that I'm going to show you, is not as easy peasy as that because it is more intricate. So I do need my precision base plate. Bring my machine back on over. And this time I'll start with my base platform, my solo shim. And instead of one cut plate going down, I'm going to replace that with my precision base plate. Now there's been three versions of the precision base plate and it really doesn't matter which version you have. The first two um, have more of a black top to it. This has a chrome to it, which doesn't allow for the, the die to actually cut into it at all or leave any marks. The older ones do, but then you just wipe it down and it's fine. Just depends upon what you're going to be most comfortable with. This is the newest version. If you've got an older version, stick with it until it doesn't work anymore. So now I've got my die or my paper down, my die with the ridges, and one cut plate, just one, and I'm going to send it through. And there we go. Ooh, tight, tight, tight. Okay, now I've got it through, and I may want to rotate it just a little bit, just so that it has an opportunity to cut any place it didn't cut already. If I send it backwards and forwards, same back and forth and back and forth without moving the die, the roller is going to hit that die exactly the same way every time. And if it didn't cut through going the first time, it's not going to cut the second time. You have to move the die, sometimes just as much as a little angle. Move the die so that the die then hits the roller in a new and unique way. Everybody's machine has a sweet spot. Doesn't matter whose machine you own. Every machine has a sweet spot somewhere, whether you've got a Spellbinder machine or a Sizzix machine or a Gemini machine. Every machine's got a sweet spot and you want to give your die the opportunity to cut. So I just did a little rotate. Little creaks and cracks are fine. Okay. Let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, totally cut through. So all my little bits and pieces fell out. But this die, this die has an opportunity to do embossing or stenciling. So I've got all my little bits and pieces out. But see those big, those are nondescript right now. They're just kind of big blobs. And I very easily could put them right back in my, right back in my die. And the nice thing about it is you'll hear it kind of click into place. So if your die accidentally falls out and you're not done doing whatever you wanted to do with it, you just put it right back in. Oh, some car backfired, that is for sure. And it just kind of clicks into place and then it doesn't move. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna stencil this while I've got it here. 
I'm going to leave the die right on top. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. Oh, that's out. In. And we'll turn it just a little bit and maybe a little down just so you can see. Okay, so I've got my roses here because that's what it looks like. Those are roses. And I can stencil these roses. So it clicked out. I'm going to click it back in. Put it down. And let's grab me. Find me. I'm going to start with a yellow. And I've got my Couture Creations blending brush. You know, all blending brushes are really the same. There's so many out on the market. Whoever's blending brushes you have, it doesn't really make a difference. The only reason why I like Ozzy Andrews is because they have the little they have the little hat. They have the little cover. I love them for that. Otherwise, if you've got blending brushes, anybody's blending brushes are going to work. And I'm just going to go in there and I'm just going to add a little bit of color. Right over the metal. right over the metal. Okay, so there's a little bit of yellow. And now maybe I'll take a little bit of red. And blend that into my yellow. And poof, just like that, I've stenciled my dye. Now there are some places where I suppose I could add a little bit of green. There's a few little white places that look like maybe little leaves or something. I suppose I could try and add a little bit of green. And if my paper pops out, all I have to do is click it back in place. So let's take a little bit of green, and if we don't like it, no big deal. We just recut it. It's only white paper. Let's try some green hills. I like, I think, I think that one should be a little green. I don't know. Worst case scenario, we don't like it. It's only white paper. So what started out as just basic white has now turned into this. Pretty simple. All I did was use my die as a stencil. And I like the little bits of green. Just adds a little pop here and there. Pretty simple. Look at the detail. But what if I wanted to have them pop even more? What? Because right now this is flat. Did you know that when you have a die that has a design but no cut lines. So you can see these little ridges are all around and that means that it's going to cut. But the roses are just flat. They don't have those little ridges. They just have the metal kind of outlining the shape of the rose, but nothing to cut them out, which is why nothing fell out when we cut this. What if I wanted them to pop a little more? Can I do that? Yes, yes I can. So let's take another piece of white paper and we're going to start by die cutting it out just like we did just like we did before so I've got my 
my base platform, my solo shim, my precision base plate, my paper, my die, and my cut plate. And I'm gonna send it on through. Go back just a little bit. Sorry, I have to manually do it. So go back just a little bit and let's send it on through. In fact, I think maybe I'll do two of them. So there, it's through one way. Now I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna do a rotate and send it on back. And it might not need to be rotated. I could have picked it up to see if it really needed it or not. I'm just gonna go with it. Just to make sure it's cut. Beautiful. And see with that, do not, or with the precision base plate, everything just falls out. There's no kind of having to poke it all out. It just kind of all falls out. But I'm going to cut one more just so I can. So I've got the same die. I'm just going to run it through one more time. Let's see if it cuts on the first time. I don't know that it will, but I don't know that it won't. And send it on through. Okay, almost to the end, and there we go. So now I can pick it up, and I can turn it around, and I can say, oh yeah, it cut on the first time. It looks pretty good. So now I've got this one that we did, which was just straight out of the die. Use the die as a stencil. I've got this one. So we started here, we moved there, and now I'm going to take this one. And I want those roses to pop even more. And because they don't have cut lines so none of those rose petals fall out like the leaves do, I have the opportunity to use the squishy and the knock knock to push the paper into the that design. I'm going to push it from behind, push, 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 and make an embossing. And the way to do that is with the squishy and the knock knock. So I did this, started here, ran it through, and it die cut. Now I need to leave it in this exact frame. I need to leave it in the die and I need to take the precision base plate off and I need to take the solo shim off because I'm going to add the squishy and the knock knock. And remember, this is what they look like. So here I've got the base plate just the base plate. And now I'm going to put down just a cut plate. I'm going to put my design facing up. So far I've been doing everything facing down, but I need to do it facing up. And then we put the squishy And then instead of a clear pad, another clear plate, we put the knock knock. So let's review. To begin with, to cut this, to cut my die, I had my base platform, I had my solo shim, I had my precision base plate. I had my paper and my die and a clear plate and I sent it on through my machine. And it came out just like this. Then I removed the two top pieces, leaving only that big thick base plate. And I put on my clear cutting pad, 
I took my die in my paper and I flipped it over. And then I put my squishy and my knock-knock on top. What does the squishy and the knock-knock do? This is squishy because it move because it, it it gives and it squishes. As I send it through the machine, this top plate is going to put pressure on it and it's going to force that squishy to push that paper into all of those crevices of my of my roses. It's going to emboss it. We used to do hand embossing where we'd get a light box and a stencil or a, a little stylus and we'd go in there and we'd we'd hand emboss it. The squishy and the knock knock take the place of that and allow you to do it with just one roll. So again my base platform, my clear pad, my die cut that's been already cut out. I've turned it upside down and now I've laid my squishy over the top and my knock knock and I'm going to send it on through. Now how do you know if you're doing it right? Your squishy as it's being compressed down, as the roller is hitting it and it's being compressed into the die, it's going to get longer and longer. So you're going to see it grow and you need the squishy to come out the back end. I know that sounds weird, but you want the squishy to come out the back end. Woohoo! For back end squishy. As I roll it, you will see it start to grow. You will see the gray start to get longer and longer and longer because it's being compressed by the roller of the machine. Look at look at how far it's growing. If your squishy is not coming out the back end, you got it wrong. Something's not right. And I look at how far. Look at that. You couldn't even see it when I started. And I only need to send it through once. That's it. Just once. You're not going to send it forward and backwards. You're not cutting it. You're embossing it. You've already done the cut. Now I can take it out. And you can hopefully see the embossing that has been left. Can you see the rose, the detail in the roses? Remember, it starts, see how flat that is? Now see how detailed that is? And that is where we could stop and just have this beautifully embossed rose uh, die cut, absolutely. But remember, you have the opportunity to take it one step further. What if I put it back and I clicked it in and now I use my stenciling tool, I use my, my brushes to use the die as a stencil. It's not going to be as flat as this. You're going to have some hills and some valleys because we took the time to do the embossing. So let's grab some colors and maybe we change it up a little. Not a lot because it's me and I'm predictable. <laughs> so how about we start with some yellow. I like yellow. It goes with everything. You can make it warm. You can actually use yellow to make cool. So I could take it 
and be done. And just have beautiful yellow roses. But again, it's me. So we're gonna add a few, we're gonna add a little bit more of something. And I think I'm gonna go with maybe some pink. Ooh, pink, let's try some pink. And the ink that I'm using is Hero Arts. They are Hero Cubes. They are exclusive to scrapbooking made simple. The only place you're gonna find the cubes sold individually, not in a four pack, but individually is scrapbooking made simple. And all the colors I have here also have full size pads. So I think my pink is going to end up being almost red. I'm just going to do it super soft. S super soft. Super soft. Light touch. Think light. Think airy. Think whipped cream. If you're thinking whipped cream on eggnog, don't think the eggnog. That's kind of heavy. But think like a cloud when you want the colors to come out light. Think very light and like a cloud. If I want the colors to come out heavier, I'm going to keep layering my color on and I'm going to add a little more pressure. So if I want them a little darker just down at the base, I'm going to go in and add that color just at the base. All right, and there we go. The difference between this one, let's do it side by side. The difference between this one and this one is that here, it's embossed, it's textured, it's raised, and here it is not, it is flat. It just depends upon how in, how, um, detailed you want it to be how much so having it embossed and having that extra texture gives an extra layer to your project because you can feel it you can feel it whereas this is just very flat they're both beautiful it just depends upon what it is you want to do so we started here and then we went here with just a simple simple stenciling right over the top. We didn't do the squishy. We didn't do the knock knock. We just stenciled right over the top of the die. This one, we did a two step process. We die cut first and then we did the squishy and the knock knock to get that, to get that paper pushed into that detail, the rose detail, to give that embossing and then we colored it. Okay, so that's where we're starting. But that's by no means where we're ending. All right, let's move on. I think I will take, I'll take this one next. So I'm gonna put this one away. And I'm gonna use this one next. Now remember, I cut this one for you in the beginning just to show you how simple it is, how a simple die doesn't need a precision base plate. It's just one roll. This is considered an open frame die because it's open. I can stick my hand through it. Its companion piece, however, is not an open frame die. This is a very intricate die, and if you want to cut it, you will need to use a precision base plate. Oh, but you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm going to step back one. Hold up. Step back. Let's go back to this one. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, let's go back to our rows. Let's go one step further. What if we don't want a die cut at all? What if we don't want any of it to fall out? We don't want any of those little pieces to fall out. Let's go back one step. Let's take a piece of paper
and let's cut. Oh, we're not cut. No, we're not going to cut. Let's take a piece of paper and let's emboss this. So typically, I would be bringing over my Big Shot and I would be putting down my base platform and I would be putting down my precision base plate and my die and my paper and my top and I'd be sending it through so we get this piece here. Oh, let's do something completely different. Let's skip that entire step. Skip the entire step and let's just use my squishy and my knock knock. So we're gonna put my clear plate down. We're gonna flip my die over so that my paper is facing up. We're going to add my squishy. Get in, move it. And we're going to add my knock knock. So knowing that, what do you think is going to happen? It can't cut out. There's no way for me to get all of those little pieces to fall out because I'm not using a cutting. I, I, I've given up cutting. I didn't use the precision base plate. I went straight to my squishy and my knock knock. And remember, you want that knock knock to come out the back end. That's how you know if you've got your sandwich right. And see, you can't see it, but now you can look at it. it's growing and it's growing and it's growing. If you remember, squishy out the back end. <laughs> okay, it's maybe not the most um, <laughs> subtle phrasing <laughs> to get you to remember something, but if you remember squishy out the back end, I think you'll be okay. Now, what have I done? I haven't cut anything. Nothing is going to fall out. Nothing is going to fall out. But boy, have I embossed it. And now I can use the entire, the entire, I should have used a slightly bigger piece of paper, die as a stencil. You know what, I'm gonna run it through one more time. I'm gonna use a slightly bigger piece of paper just to make my heart happy. Ooh, I'm gonna go through white paper like crazy today. There, okay, so because we're going to emboss this, I need to have, I've got my base plate, my clear pad, my die facing up, my squishy, and my knock knock and I'm gonna send it on through my machine. Give myself a little bit more room to work. These YouTubes are not edited, they're not dubbed over, they're not voiced, they are, you see what you get and what you get is what you see. And see it growing out? My squishy's coming out my back end, that's perfect, that's exactly what I want. You do not wanna run it back. It's a one roll only. I've got my embossing. Can you see that embossing on there? Got my embossing done. I can put my die back in place. Yes. And now I can take and I can stencil it, the whole thing. So because it's me, I'm going to start with yellow and I'm going to do the whole thing in yellow. I'm just going to stencil the whole darn thing. And I'm not being overly careful or worried about highs and lows. You want highs and lows in your coloring. That's what gives it depth. If everything is the same color, it's flat. You're trying to avoid flat. You're taking all of this work just to avoid it looking flat. I think I've got a little piece in there. Well, too bad, so sad. Now, because I used the squishy and the knock-knock, 
it didn't cut anything. The squishy and the knock knock prevent the die from cutting out. Okay, there's that. And maybe I take some, I don't know, what color do we want? Um, how about just some orange? And let's get my orange. And I'll do some of my roses with a little bit of orange going on. And I'm just kind of hitting my roses. And then maybe we grab some green. And let's see, my green is right here. And maybe I use my green hills. And I'm just going to hit in between the roses. If I accidentally go into a rose, am I going to cry? Heavens no! I'm just going to go around all those roses in my green. Let's get up here and get in there. Okay, kind of looks like a hot mess. I would agree with you. And then because it's me, I'll go over with the yellow just a little bit, just for good measure. Now you don't have to. But to me, it just kind of blends everything together, cements everything, kind of grounds it on down. All right, that's what we've got. Okay, are you ready? That's what we end up with. And it's all raised and detailed and there's height to it and there's texture. It's not just flat paper. It's textured and where the greens ran into the oranges and so on and so forth, who no big deal. And then how you trim it out is entirely up to you. So I just took the colors and kind of went over the sides and kind of overlapped them and ran them into each other. Now you've got this. Okay, so we started here, and then we went here where it's very flat, and then we went here where it's very raised but still die cut out, and then we went here where we didn't have anything fall out. We used the entire die as a stencil. And it's raised. Right? That's a happy day. Which one do you like better? You don't have to choose. What if you don't have a die cutting machine? 
can you just use the whole thing as a stencil? What if you, I don't know how much this die is. What if this die is $3.99? That's cheaper than a stencil. We all know that, that's cheaper than a stencil. Can you just use it if all you want it for is a stencil? Maybe you don't have a die cutting machine yet. Well, this is a great way to buy some wonderful dies so that when you do get your die cutting machine, I really should have taped it. You do get your die cutting machine, you've got die cuts to start playing with, but until you do, you can use it just as a stencil. If you're going to use it just as a stencil, tape it down. When you're using it from the die, when you after you've die cut it, it's pushed in so the paper doesn't move. Okay, red. And my last one, green. I'm afraid to take my hand off of it. So if you don't have a die cutting machine, can you still use dies? Absolutely, and for the price they're at, Use them as a stencil if you're not ready to get into a die cutting machine. And then when you are, you've already got a stash to start with. So you can see it's not quite as detailed as this one because this one has pushed that paper up and it's easier to stencil because that paper is pushed up into the die. But can you do it? Oh yes you can. All right, that's just one die done a million different ways. Okay, now let's move on. Now let's move on. So I'm gonna hold these to the side. Let me put my green with my green and my red with my red and my yellow with my yellow. And let's bring over this one. And let's keep these handy. Okay, so in the beginning I showed you how to cut that out. Easy peasy. Open frame die, put your hand through it. This one, not so much. Beautiful die, but definitely would require a precision base plate. We, however, were going to go ahead and go straight to embossing it. Pull out some more white paper. We're going to go straight to straight to embossing it. I'm not going to die cut. You've already seen with the rows how it works when you die cut. I'm going to go straight to embossing. So I'm going to bring my machine over. Remember the sandwich is your base platform, your clear cutting pad, Eventually it won't be clear, it'll look like mine. Your die, your paper, your squishy, and your knock-knock. And we're gonna roll it on through. One roll, squishy came out the back end. One roll. And 
and let's see what we have. So see my paper, because, because it's been pushed into all the open little places, my paper and my die, they don't separate. <laughs> Not as easy as if I was just laying a die on top of paper and stenciling over the top of it. Now let's grab let's grab pink and let's use let's use some bubble gum. And let's go all the way around. Now remember, because I use the squishy and the knock knock, that paper is pushed up. So it's high so that the ink can hit it very easily. It's not flat to the ground, it's raised. So the ink has a much easier time. And I just want to color everything that I see that's white. Okay, so I think we're good. I've got it all pink. It's not the same pink in every place. I've got some where it's a little lighter, some where it's a little darker. And now I think I'm gonna take some blue. And I'm like, blue? And I'm like, yeah, why not? It's only white paper. What's the worst that happens? We don't like it. If that's the case, then you finish the card or the project you were going to make with it. This would make a lovely little ornament or a tag for somebody. You finish it, and then if you really don't like it, give it away. <laughs> but you have to finish. You can't just do part of it and then say, oh, no, I don't like that at all. you got to finish. Quite often, we are our harshest critics. We look at everything with such an eye of expecting perfection. Okay, so... There was a comment this week from a, cust from a customer. It was on YouTube. I don't know if she's a customer or not, but she posted a comment. Okay, so I, I'm going to just go, I'm gonna go up and say hello and tilt back because that's a lot of me. Ooh, even for me, that's a lot of me. So there was a customer who left a comment on YouTube that I approved. And she had said how she had made a sympathy card for somebody, a coworker, And... It wasn't perfect. And another coworker had said, oh, something to the effect of, oh, I would never, you know, I would never do that. I would have thrown that away. Or I, 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 I only give cards that are absolutely perfect. And then a third coworker stepped in and said, it really is the thought that counts, isn't it? Well, God bless that other coworker who said it really is the thought that counts, isn't it? We are not perfect. We are loving and we are giving and we are thoughtful and we are kind. But we are not perfect. Sometimes we can be cranky and sometimes we can be a bit persistent or demanding, but we are also kind and giving and loving and thoughtful and considerate and compassionate and sympathize and empathize we are not perfect so don't expect your projects to be perfect and if they are not they are not worthy to be given don't put that burden on yourself nobody expects it but you that was a very very hard lesson for me to learn that it was okay not to be perfect all the time. Very demanding father. Expected perfection. You want to please, but you have to, you have to please yourself. And if you're so hard on yourself, you're your worst critic. Get that voice out of your head. And I promise you, even if you think it's the worst thing you've ever done. Patty V, who was 
here making samples today is looking at some of the stuff. Oh, this is awful. And we're like, Patty, it's fabulous. Just make it, just make it, finish it. And whomever you give it to is not going to see that the her, her matting was wonky. They're going to see the love and thought you put behind it. So if you are that customer who wrote that comment, you just keep going and put those voices out of your head. You did a kindness for somebody. That's what matters. Okay, lecture for today over. <laughs> I love it because I can see afterwards how many people clicked off after they get a, a Stacy. <laughs> They're like, this is not about crafting. And it's like, well, it kind of is. <laughs> okay, so we're back to adding blue. Blue, blue, blue. <laughs> blue, blue, blue. And it's not going to be perfect. And I'm going to be okay with that. And that is why I do not edit my videos. Do you know how long I would sit there trying to edit a video? I would want to make it perfect. I would want to edit out the parts that I didn't like and retape the parts that, you know, I know this is, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is how I do it. And this is how you get it. <laughs> okay. So a little bit of blue over the pink. Can I come back with a little pink? Yes. Maybe just a little bit, just to make my heart happy. A little bit of pink over the top. Just to kind of soften and blend everything together. I'm that girl. I always like to come back with the first color. Just to kind of blend everything in. And you're like, I don't know about that color combination, Stacy. Well, neither do I, but we're going to find out, aren't we? It's only white paper. All right. Oh, I had these in such a nice little order, and now they're not, but that's okay. Pink, pink, blue, blue. All right, should we see what it looks like? Looks like this now. think look and it's it's got height can I don't know if my camera can get the height it's can you see the the height of the paper that it's not flat but you're thinking Stacy how am I gonna cut that out ha I mean you could you could cut it as a square or a rectangle sure you could cut it out Absolutely. I would want to add more of my ink around it and square it off and use that, sure. But because it has the frame die, I also have that opportunity to now cut it out. So let's put this here and that there. And let's bring over my machine. So this is an open frame die. It means I'm not going to use my squishy and knock knock because I'm not trying to emboss it. I don't have to use my precision base plate because it's not intricate at all. I can just put my paper down. I've got my clear plate on the bottom. Kind of frame that around to the best of my abilities. I'd love to stand up and do that, but I'm sitting down. Put on my do not cut plate right over the top. And send it through and let's see what we get. Mm, nope, see, look at that. Going through too easy. What did I forget? I had to have forgotten something. So because I'm using a thin die, I forgot my solo shim. Gotta have that solo shim there. It's amazing something that thin will make a difference on whether your die will cut or not. Should I reline it up? I'm not gonna tape it down to keep it in place. I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants because I'm not perfect and it will be fine no matter how it cuts. 
We're going to love it and live with it. Oh yeah, there we go. See, now I can tell. All right. There we go. Bam. All the texture. How pretty is that? I didn't die cut it all out if I had done that. All the little bits and all the little pieces would have fallen out. But today we're talking about embossing. And I did that with this. But what if I want to use black paper. Okay, no problem. We're going to go back to using our squishy and our knock knock because I don't want to die cut this out. I want to emboss. I'm going to emboss it. So I go back to my base plate, my die face up, my paper up oh, wait 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 my clear plate my base plate my clear plate my die face up my paper face up well it's the same on either side so it makes no difference there <laughs> that was a trick question <laughs> i'm not sure for who though <laughs> My squishy and my knock knock and now I'm gonna send it on through and I'm gonna emboss this black piece of paper look and see it growing out the back side creaks and cracks are okay and it growing out the back end squishy out the back end that's what we're all all going for here And I've got it embossed. Now it's black paper so the dye based inks that I have here from Hero Arts they're not gonna work. No dye based ink would work because if you put a dye based ink on black paper the black absorbs the color. So what do you have to use here? pigment based. You have to use a pigment based ink. So I have got my metallics from Eyes Ink. I like them. They're inexpensive. That's why I like them the best. They're inexpensive little metallic inks. They are a pigment based ink. So a pigment based ink is going to lay on top. What color is in here? A pigment based ink is going to sit on top of the paper versus a dye based ink that's going to absorb into the paper. Pigment sits on top, dye absorbs in. Now, if I go in here and let's play with a little bit of silver. And I go ahead and I start to put my silver everywhere. I always start with a base color of something that I kind of put everywhere. That way if I miss it with another color, I know that just about everything has been hit. I want to make sure I've got as much of it covered and colored as possible. All right, so I've got a nice little coat of silver going down. Silver pigment and most metallics are a pigment based ink. I don't think I've ever seen a dye based metallic because that metallic needs to sit on top to give you that metal look, that metal feel. 
It's not to say that there might not be one out there. I just have never seen it. So now, see, and my die doesn't move because it's the paper's been pushed up into the, the little openings. So I've got silver going on. This is a woodware brush. So you get two brushes and I think 10, I think maybe five or 10 of the little thingies for $5 and then a whole pack of the refills for $5. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of gold. Not everywhere, just here and there. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna hit it maybe with a little bit of the copper, just for, just for fun. of everything everywhere. Okay, so that's what we've got. Now there's a ton of, there's ink on top because I've been spouncing it. Let's cover those up and let's take off the die and see what we've got. Ready? There's my reveal. And then let's cut it out. So I don't need my squishy and my knock knock. I do need my base plate. I do need my solo shim. I do need my bottom cup plate. I do need my paper, my die. Line them up the best I can. While in a sitting position and not standing over the top of it, which would make my heart so much happier. Oh, and I just moved it. That look good, can you tell? Just cut it, right? I hear you. Let me tilt that up just a little bit. And uh see it's just I just know it's just a little off, but okay, we're not going we're just gonna do it and get what we get and we don't pitch a fit. It's only black paper. And send it on through. One roll will do, creaks and cracks are done. Easy peasy, look at that, easy peasy roll. And poof. Just like that. Look what we've got. See, I did, it moved. Well, we're just gonna pop that bad boy in there and go woo. Okay, what do you think? So is it this way that you like it? Or is it this the way that you like it? Or would you prefer, I, I do have this one. Would you prefer that you just leave it in the white? Options, they're yours. And this isn't even using the die for what it was meant to use for, which is cutting all of those little bits and pieces out. I love them embossed. They're beautiful embossed. They're beautiful stenciled. And by having that embossing feature, push that paper up. It allows the, the ink, whether you're using a, a spouncer, a blending tool, or a blending brush, because that paper's raised up higher, it allows it to get to that paper and ink it easier. Okay, let's move on. Let's play with this one. So this is a Simply Refined die from a long time ago. 
it has a center die and then it has a frame die. I'm going to start with the center die and let's grab some white paper and again I'm not going to cut it. I'm only going to do the embossing. You'll be able to die cut it at home. Ooh, that's close, but hey, we'll go with close. All right, so I'm just going to emboss. That means I don't need my solo shim. It means that I do need my cup plate. I need to turn my die upside down. I need to put my paper on top of it. And then I need my squishy and my knock knock. And then I'm going to send it on through. Creaks and cracks are okay. It's coming out the back end. Works for me. Up, up. Done. My die is locked in because the paper is now pushed up into those empty spaces. Let's get some ink and let's ink it really, really fast. Ooh, I really did cut it close. All right, well, it's going to be what it's going to be. So let's go with some... Let's go with some yellow. And just ink it really good. I've got a base of yellow down. Works for me. Move along. Let's do some pale tomato. Kind of add some of that in. Come back with my yellow. Kind of blend it all together grab some green. Ah. Okay, fresh lawn, open up. There we go. Okay, there we are. Didn't take much time at all. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's beautiful. But how do we cut this out? Well, remember, even though this die has a background to it, the frame of it has a cut line all the way around it. So if I don't want to use the whole thing, I just want to cut out that one flower, all I have to do is line it up. Now I could, I could, Let's go ahead, let's cut it. So I'm not going to use my squishy and my knock knock and I don't have to use a precision base plate because the only cut I'm caring about is the cut that's going to cut my flower out. I don't care about the rest of this at all, at least not right now. 
So let's bring my machine back over. Perfect, I've got my, oh, I need to have my solo shim. You saw what happened when I didn't use it, when my, the platform wasn't tall enough to add enough pressure to cut my die out. There, I've got my die. And all I care about it cutting is that flower. I know it's askew. It's because I don't care about the background. I only care about that one flower. Oh, I'm off. Oh, well, my flower's off the page, but... Send it through. One time should be more than enough because ultimately what you're doing is just cutting an open frame die because all I want is that center flower. So it definitely cut my paper into the die, but it cut out my beautiful flower. And if I want, now I can cut, let's see, and this time I'm going to need a precision base plate because I've got detail, because I, now I want that detail. So we'll take and put my precision base plate down. I've got my base platform, my solo shim, my precision base plate, my die kind of at an angle. And my do not cut plate and let's send it on through. A little harder to cut a little tighter because it's a little more detailed and so that precision base plate adds a little more pressure I don't know if we're gonna need to go back or not my guess is no so I do have that same cut just out of black which then I could put through okay so let's do that <laughs> okay but I've got this one here All my little bits and pieces are going to come out. All right, I think that's, they're not all out, but they're un, enough that you get the idea. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. So we could take that. And put that on there. Right? Ooh. But wait, we had this piece, right? What if we took it? And we popped it back in the die. A hair bit too big. All right, so we put it back there. We bring over our machine, send it through, take off the solo shim. plate 
my die with the paper facing up. Make sure it's all lined up. My squishy. I moved it. Well, we're just going to go for it. And my knock knock. And let's send it on through, see what we get. Cracks and creaks are perfectly fine. Don't be alarmed. Oh yeah, it really moved, but that's okay. We're just gonna live with it. That's gonna act like almost a shadow. And then take our Spencer. And because the ink has been, or the paper's been pushed up, it's easier for the spouncer to hit it. And maybe do a little silver in there. little bit of the copper for the leaf. Ooh, that was not put on very straight, Stacy. Okay, have no idea what we're going to get, but what we had was a piece of black paper that was just blah. Now we stand a chance of at least having something. It moved, but that's okay. I'd still use it. I'd find a place for it. I might go back there and ink a little bit more, but if you don't try, you don't know. And you were just going to throw that away because it was a weird shaped looking piece of black paper. Go ahead, do the embossing, give it a try. And if you need to add more, click it back in place and go in and add more. All right, moving on. So that tells you just because you've got a, a, a strange looking die, if it's got a frame, if it's got a die that fits in it and a frame to get it out, you absolutely can do something like that. Because that frame that's built in, the, dot, the cut around, is built right into the main frame and it just cut this piece right out for you. Easy peasy. Okay, moving on. I think next we're gonna play with, we're gonna play with what is known as a hot foil plate. So I've got a hot foil plate right here. And that's what it looks like. And yes, it's meant to be used. You can use it with a glimmer machine. You can use it with a go press and foil machine. Who It is not meant to go with a minx. It's, it, you need to put it through a glimmer or a go press and foil machine. So, but what if you don't have a glimmer machine or a go press and foil machine? No worries, easy peasy. We're gonna play with it and we're gonna use it a couple different ways. So first, let's get some more white paper. I thought I had enough cut. Boy, was I wrong. Okay, so first thing, let's just do a plain color. Let's just do a plain color. 
I'm going to grab my purple. Hmm, purple. And I'm going to ink the whole thing. Now, it, this is a thicker piece of metal than the dies we've been using. The metal is actually thicker, it doesn't move, it doesn't bend, and the design, because it's meant to transfer foil, is a wider design. They're not very, very fine, fine lines. I mean, look at the fine, fine, fine lines here. Hopefully it zooms in at some point, and you can see the fine lines of the the edges where the die cuts. This, however, is so much more substantial and it's used a little differently. So I'm going to bring my machine on over. It's not going to die cut at all because there's none of those edges that allow to die cut. This is meant to transfer foil. I'm going to use it to transfer ink. And to do that, I need to have my knock knock. I absolutely need my knock knock. I'm going to put my my clear plate down. No solution because I'm not die cutting. I'm going to put my foil plate down even though we're not using it as a foil. Let's just make sure I got enough ink cuz I was holding it. Now I probably have too much. I'm going to put my paper right over the top of it. And then I'm going to use my knock knock. No squishy. Why am I using my knock knock? Because if I use just another clear plate or another do not cut plate and I send it through, it's not, the, the platform is not high enough to hit wah, wah, wah. and if I use my precision base plate or if I, let's put my, let's put my solo shim back on. And let's put my paper back down. And let's send it on through. Now it's too tall and my machine will not take it. Once it hits that once it hits the, the die, my machine will not take it. Do not force. It's saying no can do. So if it doesn't work with just the two plates and it doesn't work with the solo shim, what does it work with? Well, it works when you use your impression pad. So let's ink it up again. I'm just going to use, I'm going to put it down. I'm just going to use the back side. So lay it down. This time I'm going to use my knock knock right over the top. The knock knock has just enough height to add the pressure that you need when you send it through. It's just a little bit higher than a cutting pad and a little bit lower than using, adding your, I mean, it's hard to believe, but something this thin made a difference and would not let me send it on through. So there we go. And I'll just bring it on back because I can for good measure. And let's see what we've got. 
Okay, world of difference. From that to that. So if you are online and you're seeing foil plates and you're like, oh, but I don't have a foil machine. Okay, no big deal. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. You're just going to use it a different way. And what a beautiful background this makes. Boy, that purple is really purple. Maybe I'll use the purple again. Now it doesn't have any raised texture to it because it's not an embossing. I can't use my squishy and my knock knock to, to really emboss this. But it does make a beautiful, beautiful impression. So let's do it again. So I'm going to take my, let's use some pink. And let's scatter it maybe with a little bit of blue. Last but not least, let's throw a little bit of purple. Have no idea what we're going to get. But it's just it's just white paper. You think that's good? Too much purple? Not enough blue? All right, we're just going to go for it. That's my first one. Now remember what your sandwich is. I've got my base platform, my clear plate, my hot foil plate, my paper, and then my knock-knock. And let's send it on through. And it's a very easy roll. Almost feels like it's not doing anything at all. Roll it all the way before you give up on it. It doesn't take much to transfer ink. It takes a lot more to do a die cut because you got to have enough pressure. Oh, pretty. Look at how pretty that is. Now let's change it up. Let's clean it up really good. And it's a good thing I own a paper crafting store because I go through white paper like crazy. So I want to get as much of that purple off. That looks pretty good. Looks like it's pretty much out of purple. I'm going to take it. And let's do, let's do my yellow. And let's do the whole thing in yellow. Then let's add a little orange. And let's add a little bit of red.
and let's see what we've got. So, base platform, cutting plate, foil plate, paper, knock knock. Very few times you use it without using the squishy. This is one of the times where you would use it without using the squishy. Roll it through. And bring it back. So now you have it, and it really just depends, I mean think about all the backgrounds you can make, think about all the things you can do with this, and it's up to you. Do you like the single color? Do you like the pinks and the purples and the blues kind of blended, a soft lavender? Do you like the reds and the oranges? I don't know, what makes your heart happy? The whole point is you don't have to choose. You can do it all with that plate, but there's more. Let's take the plate again, and we're gonna change it up entirely this time. I'm not gonna use ink at all. So I think I'm good. This time, make sure I've got paper, yes. This time I'm going to use my Impressions glue pad, my Essentials glue pad. Essentials glue pad. Blah, blah, blah. Essentials glue pad. It comes packaged like this. You've got a glue pad that's going to come completely dry, totally empty, nothing on it. And it's gonna come with what most people think is a re-inker. It is not. You do not take all the glue when you first get it and put all the glue on your pad and then come back two months later expecting it to be juicy and ready to work. You only use as much glue as you need for what you're doing for the project. So I've already got, I mean, once the glue is on there, it's on there and it will stay tacky forever. And, and mine is obviously dirty. Yours will be pristine. I The last one I used was so bad that they finally made me throw it away. The girls did. They're like, it's got to go. So I have just put a little Z of glue, just a little bit. Rub it on. I don't want to use too much because you can never put it back in the bottle. And then I want to, just like I was doing with my ink, It's got a little clear lid that goes on, and then your top. Now I'm gonna send it through on white paper, and then I'm gonna send it through on black paper, and we're gonna see. So now I've got glue on here, and the glue is water soluble. You don't have to worry. You can wash it off with a baby wipe. You can do it with Dawn dishwashing detergent. It's whatever works. It's all water soluble. So let's put a piece of white paper on the top. Oh yeah, I'm even gonna need more white paper, holy smokes. And then my knock knock. And let's send it through. And I can send it back if I want. Bring it over. Can you see the design on there? Can you see the, 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 the glue? 
don't know if I can get a camera image of it or not, but there's the design is all done in glue. Now, I'm going to set that aside because it has to go tacky. This glue to work perfectly must go tacky. It's the time in your life where it is okay to be tacky. Now, I'm just going to glue this up again. I'm not even going to add any more to it. I'm just going to glue it up again, and hopefully I have enough on my pad. We're going to try. What's the worst that can hurt? Okay, put it down, cover it up, put my black paper on it. Put my knock knock on top and bring it on over and send it on through. Can you see why you now need a knock knock and a squishy? I mean, Look at, look at all of the different things we've done with our knock knock and squishy. It's, it's absolutely crazy how much we've done with a knock knock and a squishy. It's important. It's really important. You already put your money in the big item. That was the machine. Now you need to get the tools that are going to help you utilize it to make it look like so much more. Okay, so I put my glue on. Can you see the image? Now I need to let it go tacky. This glue, if you put your, if you put your, your, glitter on or whatever you're going to put over the top of it too soon and it didn't go tacky it will wipe right off the glitter will this is a two-way glue my essentials glue pad is called a two-way glue which means that it stays tacky until you put something on it so you could walk away for 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes a half an hour and come back and you'll still be able to drizzle glitter on it so let's drizzle some glitter on it, shall we? How about we do a little bit of blue? And I'm gonna use very little because I'm gonna mix my glitters. I mean, there's just a waft of blue. I can always add more, but because I know I'm going to mix my glitter. Maybe a little bit of gold. Just a little bit, a little dabble do ya. I don't wanna to have too much left over because I can't put it back into my pot. I can make a mishmash, but I can't put it back into my pot. And just for, just for fun, we'll add a little bit of lavender. Just a little bit. All right, we'll see if I have enough. I might have to add some more, but look at how little I'm using. I mean, it's a little. Then I can take my finger and I can slowly start rubbing it over the design. And where I can feel it's tacky, I can tell you it still needs more. Oh yeah, I can tell it's tacky in some places. So right now I don't have quite enough down. What if we put some more of the blue down? So I can take just a little bit more of the blue and where I felt it was tacky on my finger, add just a little bit more of the blue and then it will adhere to wherever the glue hasn't been fully covered up. 
Then I can take my inexpensive, I guess they're now two or three dollars, my inexpensive makeup brush, and I can gather that glitter into the center, and I can rub it around the whole image to make sure that every place that needs glitter is glittered. And that's what I'm left with right there. Now you might want to put that in a mishmash pile or a mishmash pot. Oh, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Ooh. Gotta have the knock knock to add enough pressure to your foil plate. Now it almost looks like you foiled with a foil plate. And once it's down, it's down. Look at that. I am using Stampendous glitter. It is an ultra fine glitter. You need something ultra fine, micro fine, and you want to keep it as, you don't want to go anything bigger than ultra fine because then the grains of the glitter get too chunky and it doesn't hold to the fine detail. But remember, I did black too. Hmm, should we do the same colors in black and see what it looks like in the difference? So let's just go apples to apples and I'll use a little bit of blue. Now this is an awful lot of glitter that Stampendous gives you. I want to say it retails for like $3.90 and it's a lot of glitter. You're going to have it for quite some time. Especially when you use as little of it as I am using. Let's throw down some gold. Just a little waft. Let's throw down some pink. So the chunkier the glitter, the harder it will be to hold to the detail of that impression. Whether you're using a stamp to do this or a foil plate to do this, the the chunkier the glitter, so you don't want fine glitter. I know you would think fine would be fine enough, but fine is not fine. You need ultra fine or micro fine to make this work. Oh, that's a lot. I got a lot going on. Well, who knows? Maybe I don't. It just looks like a lot because it's on black. And then take my finger. and start moving that glitter. Nope, I don't have enough on. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. Let's add some more blue. And let's go back and rub it into the places where I could feel it was tacky. Oh yeah, see I missed all over here in total. And then just to be sure, let's grab our inexpensive makeup brush, pull it all into the center, and then go over the whole thing. And let's see how much I have left now that I'm done. Okay, I don't have enough left to even make, um, I mean there's not even anything left. So let me get rid of it. When it's down, it's down. Oh my gosh, is that beautiful. White. Holy smokes, artichokes. Ooh. It almost looks holographic. Ooh. So if you are looking at Simply Defined products and you see foil plates, hello, <laughs> hello, could have I have taken my foil plate and inked it up with my metallics and sent it through? Absolutely I could have, without any question. 
Ooh, these are beautiful though, aren't they? That's what the essentials and the glitter. That's just a little bit of happiness. Absolutely I could. So let's just take it and I'm just going to go straight to it. I'm just going to go straight to it. And oh, I should have started with silver. Oh well, silver's my lightest color, but and maybe some copper. That's enough. I don't know. Let's grab a piece of black paper. What's the worst that can happen? It's not enough. Let's bring my machine on over. Remember, I'm using a foil plate, but we're not foiling at all. I've got my base platform. I've got my cutting plate. I've got my my foil plate all inked up with pigment based metallic inks from Aladdin. I have got my knock knock plate which we sell along with the squishy because really they're two peas in a pod and 99.9% .9 of the time you use them together except this time. Look at how easy the roll is. Look at how easy that roll is and then send it back. done in the metallic. I don't know. That's beautiful in the metallic. So you've got the metallic. You've got the glittered. Depending on which one you like better. You've got it in red and in yellows. You've got it in purples. You've got it in blues and pinks and purples. We are not using the plate for what its intended purpose was, but we've made some pretty stunning things here, doing a lot of different techniques with product you may already have in your crafty arsenal. All you need are the foil plates to make them work. Okay. We got to move on. We got more things to do. I know, right? Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the crease pad. Now I'm only going to play with the crease pad for one technique because in mid January, I have got a whole idea of what I want to do with the crease pad. And I just had to make sure that they would have enough of them in January so that I could do that whole idea. But for today, I want to talk to you about the crease pad. And the crease pad is known as what I call the thud pad because it kind of thuds. It certainly does not knock knock and it certainly does not squishy. It is now black. It's I think the only thing that might be black because the knock knock and the squishy are now white and gray. And what do you use a crease pad for? Traditionally, traditionally, standardly, normally, you would use it if you had a die that had a scoring mark in it. If you had a box or an envelope, something that needed to be scored, you would use the crease pad as your top plate because it would allow you to get those scoring lines in there. That is what a crease pad is for when you have something that scores. I want to tell you that the crease pad comes with two mylar shims. There is absolutely nothing on the instructions as to why you have these two mylar shims. No place, nowhere, no how. I looked, I searched, I'm looking for the packaging. I looked, I searched, I found no reason for them. My, my understanding is that they are to be used as a shim 
just in case your machine needs a little extra pressure for the score lines. Like I said, everybody's machine has a sweet spot and machines over time get loose. N not, not loose in a, I mean, you know, loose. Not, <laughs> not that they're going out and crafting with somebody else behind your back, but, <laughs> but that the more you use them, the more they loosen up and lose a little bit of pressure. So Sizzix has included two Mylar shims to be used with your crease pad should you use your crease pad to do an actual score line and it doesn't score enough. You start with one Mylar shim and see if it will add enough pressure to put those score lines in. You use a second Mylar shim if you need even more pressure. We're not gonna use it at all for that today. <laughs> We're doing something totally different. What if you have a die that is meant to cut, doesn't have a place to really do any kind of, you know, like we did in the beginning, any kind of embossing to it. I mean, all of these dies had great places to stencil and great places to emboss, but this one, this one doesn't. You look at this die and it's pretty much closed. There's not much to do. It's a beautiful die when it cuts out. It cuts a beautiful tree. But what if we wanted to do something more with it? Okay. So now I have to remember my sandwich. Well, let's ink it and we'll try. Worst case scenario is I get it wrong the first time and I have to go back and do it a second time. If that's the only time in my life I've ever had to do that, well, I'd be lying to you. <laughs> yep. All right, so let's take some, I think I'm gonna take, I know I don't need that, I know I need my thud, I know I don't need my knock knock. I may need my solo shim. I'm going to start with my solo shim and with my clear plate and then I'll do my die, my paper, my thud and we're going to see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? So what am I going to do to this? I'm going to ink it up. I'm going to do what? I'm going to ink up this die. Right over the cut lines. I'm just going to ink it up. Where my tree is, I'm doing green. Lightly, don't have to be hard on it. Where my little stand is, I'm going to do a little bit of just rust. And I'm going to put it on my machine. I better close my these glitters. Otherwise, I'm just asking for trouble. So I've got my base platform, my solo shim that I'm not sure if I need yet or not, my cut plate, my die, just lightly inked with, with uh, my Hero Hues. Let's take a piece of paper over the top. Let's, that's a big piece of paper, but well, let's just cut it down a little bit. Piece of paper over the top. And then my thud. And let's see what happens. Roll, 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 roll. Ooh, let's see. Looks good to me. And I've now transferred my image. 
but I'm not done. Let's put that back on top and let's click it into place. So I did need, I did remember correctly. I did need my solo shim. Okay, so I've taken it and I've clicked it back into place. Now let's take some green and let's stencil. So I didn't emboss it. I transferred the ink from those very fine, very thin lines. Why didn't I use a squishy and a knock knock? Because sometimes when you're transferring the ink, the squishy and the knock knock can move just a little bit because that squishy is going to move, right? It's going to squish out and it kind of makes the ink smear a little bit. So I'm using my thud, my crease pad for what they absolutely had no intention of it doing without question. So I'm just going to go all the way around and get some ink kind of everywhere. Okay, so I've got my green going. That's pretty good. Now let's add maybe a little bit of my rust. So let's go into my orange and I'm going to do my little uh, in, in, in. Down, down, down. I'm going to do my little stand here that my tree, the base of my tree, the planter. A little bit of rust. So now I am using it as a stencil. And then I think I'm going to come in with my blue between this one and my navy. So let's find my blue. And where it looks like sky would be is where I'm going to add some blue. Oh, I think cornflower might be too light. Well, we'll add a soft bit of cornflower. And then we'll come back in and add a little bit of navy. Oh, that navy is. I think that's good. Kind of looks like a hot mess. Kind of looks like a hot mess. Nothing's die cut out. All of those little lines were transferred from inking the die and sending it through with the thud plate. The lines are a little too thin to work with the Essentials glue pad. So you could have the tree as a die, and it's a beautiful die. It cuts out beautifully, and the tree is gorgeous. But look what else you can have. And look at the detail that it gets from transferring that ink. What do you think? I like it. <laughs> Just ask me, I'll tell you.
<laughs> but wait, let's do it again. <laughs> okay, this time let's take let's take this die right here. Okay? And let's do the same thing. Let's wash, rinse, and repeat. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to ink it up with all yellow. I'm going to do the whole thing in yellow. Very lightly. Very lightly. I just want to make sure that if I miss a place, because you can barely see, well, you, frankly, you can't see the ink. You can't tell that there's yellow anywhere on here because it's only on the top of those cut lines. Now let's do some red on those roses. Lightly. Some red on those roses. And maybe some orange on the birdies. Have no idea what it's going to look like. It's only white paper. We're just going to go for it. Maybe a little green. Some of these. Okay, what's the worst that can happen? Like I said, it's white paper. Let's bring over my machine. So I have got my base plate, I've got my solo shim, I've got my cut plate, I've got my die, I've got my paper, I've got my crease pad, my thud. And I'm going to send it on through. And it's going to roll pretty darn easy. And I can send it through. Let's see if once should be good. We'll see what we get. What do you think? but we don't have to be done. You could be done. Okay, I'm gonna hold that one to the side. I'm gonna do it one more time. So I'm just gonna do it right on here. So let's, we started with some yellow. Very light touch. And I'm using the Hero Arts because of the felt top, the felt pads. Foam pads tend to make, you wanna squish them. They squish easily. So you get too much ink. Okay, so I did some yellow, and I did orange for the birdies, I think. And let's do some red for the roses. some green for some of the leaves and some of the little all right let's see what we get paper 
crease pad, thud pad. Don't call Sizzix and ask them for a thud pad. I'll, they'll call me and say, um, hello. Could you please call it by its right name? No, it's too late. I nicknamed it that years and years ago. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's see what we get. Oh, it moved. Oh, it moved after the fact. Okay, so now I have now I have two peas of the same pot, right? Two identical, pretty much identical. So let's put them back into each other. Let let me lay this back on top and click it back in. Cuz now I'm going to take it and I'm going to add some more color to it. So let's start with let's start with maybe um, hmm. I don't know. What color red do I want to use? Hmm. Maybe orange? I don't know. Decisions? No, I want to use red. Let's use pale tomato. And let's just use it really lightly. So I'm going to put some pale tomato over those roses. I could throw on a little orange if I wanted to. Okay. And then, oh, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Click it back into place, Stacy. Just, there we go, click it right back in. There we go. And I clicked. Okay, and then maybe for some of the leaves, some green, so orange, orange, red, red. Let's use fresh lawn and some green. We'll do some leaves here. Maybe some up here. And maybe a leaf there and a leaf down here. And then maybe we fill the rest in with blue. Let's see if just fill the rest in with blue. And I'm running that blue right over into my green. I'm running it into my red. I'm just filling all the rest of my white space in with blue. So the first thing I did was transfer the ink off of my dye with very fine, super thin lines. <gasps> but look, I mean, even that looks good, right? Even that looks amazing. And you didn't have to use it as a dye. What do you think? You think I'm about done? Are you like, yeah, you're about done. It's almost two and a half hours, Stacy. I think it is almost two and a half hours, but you know what? Oh, well. Okay, we kind of, oh, maybe a little bit more red. Just a little bit more red. Red, red, red. Just go back over and do a little red. Red, red, red. Okay, so it kind of looks like a hot mess. And I don't know that once I take the dye off of it, it's going to look any better. We're just going to have to wait and see, and if we don't like it, we can do it again. You ready? Oh, I do like it, though. Oh. Look at how pretty is that. Okay, so we went from this to this. 
Look at the detail that you get. You get all the birds, you get all the fine lines. And then I'm going to leave the ink on the outside as part of my border. Okay, different ways to use dyes. Certainly not the conventional way. This requires the crease pad, the thud pad. And ta-da, it's Taylor from Sizzix made sure that we have enough crease pads for now and for January, but she's locked them all up. Everything that's available to order has got SMS on them. <laughs> Even the ones that aren't quite available to order yet, she's got SMS on them. But my gosh, look at that. Just transferring the ink is rock star. But then transferring the ink and using it as a stencil just finishes it out. I love, love, love it. You have options. These are underutilized tools from Sizzix. And if you don't have a Sizzix machine, check your machine's manufacturer and see what they have in lieu of a scoring pad, a crease pad, or a squishy and a knock knock. I am sure they have something that's going to allow you to do the most beautiful things using dyes in a way you hadn't thought about it. If you do not have a squishy and a knock knock, you need a squishy and a knock knock. I have three squishies and knock knocks. That way I never lose them. And sometimes I will use, I'll put the, uh, uh, well, don't ask. <laughs> if you saw my mess over there, it's like I put them in three places just in case I forgot where I put it. I'll go to three different places and it'll, I know it'll be in one of them. <laughs> I mean, we did so much today and we started so simple remember way back when remember way back when when we started they're beautiful it started just like that and look at the different things we did look at what we made ma using simply defined simply refined Try and see what else I've got down here. Simply defined, simply refined. Look at what we made, Ma. Dies in a different way. Totally different. Oh, so pretty. Okay, I do not have oodles of samples to show you. The girls, we are so busy, the girls just didn't have time to make oodles of samples. I will tell you that um, that the, the Simply Defined and Simply Refined that we have in the YouTube Yummy sale are the ones that'll be on sale at a dramatically reduced price. I mean, we've got just a little bit of everything for you. There's just tons of product. There's the tree. There's just tons of them. Some of them we have one. Some of them we have two. Some of them we have 12. Some of them we have 24. Like this, this you could use this is a foil plate, so you could use it all the ways I used this foil plate today. This is the set that made one of the samples that I showed you earlier. We just, we have, they've got to go. When they're gone, they're gone. And at the prices that we put them out at, I'm hoping that they're gone quickly. Uh, this is the one we use today. I need where, this one has a die, a stamp, two dies and a stamp. I need room in the warehouse. This is a die and a stamp that would match the foil. So much to be done. So you take a look and see if there's anything that makes your heart happy. All the simply, not all of it's going on sale. Not all of it, just what's in the YouTube Yummies category. We will put the Essentials Glue Pad on sale. We will put the Thud on sale. We will put 
the squishy and the knock knock on sale and we bundle them together so you're going to get the two of them a squishy and a knock knock we'll put the precision base plate on sale we will put the hero hughes cubes on sale we will put the <laughs> glitter on sale from stampendous and we will put the metallics on sale they'll be part of the youtube just everything i have on my table here i'll make sure elena knows um to remind me to get them into the sale yay okay so samples again i don't have many to show you the girls have been so busy and the week is short so there's one showed you that one earlier that's using the background that i used the foil plate here is the balloons. So you get the die and the stamp to do. Well, you get two dies. Each balloon has different dies and different stamps so that you can do multitudes of different balloons out of the one set. Look at how pretty is this. Beautiful, right? look at how pretty is this oh my gosh this is so pretty I used that one today here we've got slimline looking simply refined where flowers grow or where flowers bloom so does hope is what it says along the side oodles of dyes that come with this set I've got our carolers Look how beautiful is that? So pretty. I used this one today. There it is. So here it is just as a die. Here it is with the ink transferred. And here it is with the ink transferred and stenciled. And last but not least, I have a very cute slim line. All right, you guys. It was a lot, I know. I, I want you to take notes. I hope you took notes. I hope you jotted down this YouTube number because if you play with squishy and knock knocks, if you play with, let me go back, if you play with the silicone pad and the textured impression pad, it will do so much more than it's ever given credit for. It is one of my most favorite tools for my Big Shot machine and it is one of the most underutilized tools and one of the cheapest tools out there that will I mean really they're very inexpensive and that thud plate that thud plate transfers that ink from any wafer dye it transfers that ink and then allows you to make it something more than what it was if you can take a dye and use it 10 different ways and have 10 different looks, it makes that die so much more valuable, especially if you're paying full price for it. Here, you're gonna be paying for my dies, $3.99, $2.99, $1.99, $0.99. So just know that when they're gone, they're gone, and that we took the inventory manually. We did our best to make sure that there were no mistakes, but if there is, we apologize in advance and we'll refund you for the missing item. But we really tried to, to make sure that we had that inventory perfect. However, as previously stated, we at SMS are kind, we're compassionate, we're loving, we're loyal, we're sympathetic, we're empathetic, we're cheerleaders. We are not perfect. <laughs> so where are you going to find all of this? You're going to find it at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Simply Defined and Simply Refined are exclusive brands to me. In January, I hope you love my next collection. It's so cute. Oh. <laughs> and I will be using the crease pad then. So if you don't get it now, 
hopefully I, I'm sure I, I'm sure we will still have some then and and you can pick it up when you see a completely different technique that I use it for definitely not what it was intended for all right you guys I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and here's to the best next week I will be doing the premiere of our Saturday with Stacy on New Year's Day so I hope you join me then bye everybody